Good evening. My name is Tumita Adi. Um, shall we get down to business, you know? Okay. Uh, wait. Okay. So, uh, like I said, my name is Tumita Adi. And I welcome you to my YouTube um, channel. I hope this video is not the very first video you're watching. You are keeping up with the entire series. Um, I have about 28, at the time of recording, 28 videos uploaded. In total, I have five more that still need to be uploaded. They're ready. They still need to be uploaded uh, and released for the public. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. And tell your, your friends that the, the content on this YouTube channel is good. So enough with the introduction. Today is... Wednesday, the 7th of July, 2021. Time is 21 minutes before 7 p.m. To be honest, I'm supposed to be watching my series because I finish at 6. Um, I have the heater running right now. I just ate my sapa slash dinner. But I was doing research. That, that's one of the reasons why. I was doing research and then we're going to talk about that. Okay. So, you know I have a project called um, SMS api dot identical docs dot co dot za so this is a project powered by identical docs it's my sms api now the type of the project we did in the previous video on this one please uh, look for sms api it's a asp.net web api project targeting.net core project this one please watch the video first because then i explained that this guy it's been hosted i just even uh republished it redeployed uh to a production environment as um i've i'm done with the changes that i made you see now my english wants now to run out of airtime depletes it's crazy it's not going anywhere so let me start from scratch the project is sp.net call web api the intent of this project is to fix something because i have multiple projects using one of the services called bulk as bulk sms also there's a video for bulk sms where i do a um an overview of bulk sms and where it's been utilized and i said that my entire project i need to revamp it to use this project called sms api like i said it's powered by identical docs so now the first tab here i was doing research posting json values to web api from spnet mvc so i was trying to do you see i opened the links you know i was doing the research and all that and then okay cool i, I could not win this guy i haven't read it but he probably pro promises something interesting i could not i didn't i didn't finish this because some of the things i don't want like json um uh, or rather ajax i'm not using stuff like from the client side now so i disqualify it this one is tedious but it was complicated to follow along um so i disqualify it this one became interesting so i think i'm gonna use this one for because look at look at this one this one is for the core so usually when i work and how i build my system identical docs i first start with the project this it was initial project so it's two in one mvc and web api this project right so i start with it if something works or if the concept works then i go to the mvc for the call if there is a need for web api for the call i do that also but i start with this one so it was in the midst of me doing a research that no this is for the call and i'm not yet gonna do the call okay so it's interesting um very very interesting i almost was gonna do this you know but i'm like no startup this is start file and i don't have it in .NET framework so i disqualify it and then stack overflow i read like I spent a lot of time doing this, you know, uh, Jason. So they were interesting. These people still uh, don't make call. So I disqualify it. So this is the project, right? Cool. Now, let's go to Visual Studio. 
So the purpose and the intent of this video is to come back and show you that I may have cracked it. But it, 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 you know, I had to go back and forth, like I said, with the research and then a couple of things. The reason why I'm making a video is because I'm excited as a developer. I'm excited as a programmer that I'm still learning some of the things that are actually working, you know. And then please pay attention to what's going to happen. Now, firstly, I'm on a different branch. The actual branch for web. So this branch is called web. The reason why it's called web is because it's corresponding to this project called identical docs underscore web. Okay. So this is the official work that I'm doing, like the real work that I'm doing. Okay. So all these changes, they are live changes. Okay. So now the first thing that I did, like I said, I confused .NET Framework with .NET Core. So what I did, I went ahead and created a folder called services this folder i thought this is dot net core i thought so now after i created a folder called services it did not you know trigger my mind that hey you supposed to have a folder called services if this is dot net core meaning that in mvc for dot net core i do have a folder called services and there's a lot in here also in dot net Call for web API, I do have a services folder and I have a uh, and then there's a lot in there. My mind did not give me that kind of information, but I did go ahead and create a folder called services as this is the right way of doing it. And then I hope you have already guessed it that this was dependency injection route that was taken or route that was taken. So I did create an interface called I sent SMS service. There we go. This is the interface, right? And I like to keep it clean. No unnecessary using statements. No unnecessary empty um, lines at the bottom. So this is the interface. It's called I send SMS service. So I like to have this as an extension. Okay. And you have to uh, prefix it with I, obviously. So it's a task, a task that returns a Boolean. The name of the method is called send SMS, right? And then I introduce uh, um, another class called SM send SMS view model. It's part of the changes. So this one was added. You can see I'll do version control. I'm soon gonna do version control. You understand this? Now I'm just giving you some good stuff. So I also have a full a class called S send SMS view model. So let's go and look for it. View models for MVC. There we go. I just put it out there. Generally, because I'm gonna be utilize, I'm gonna be using this guy, or maybe I should move it so that it can also be used by web, web API. Um, it's interesting. Wait. Because like I said, I'm still busy. Does Web API need me to send SMSs? Does it? It does. Wait. Yes, it does. Give me a second. General. Um, access pin. Feedback. No. Notifications. No. Phone number. Yes yes let's take a look at something quickly because i'm about to make a decision here um, yes there we go you see this is what i'm trying to fix this guy it's what i'm trying to fix so like i said this project is two in one it's mvc and web api we've done this a long time ago please watch this um series from ground up look for the first video i published please so you understand what i'm trying to do the reason why i'm here it's because i'm also utilizing this guy okay i'm trying to remove this guy okay so meaning that i should now make some changes move this guy not to be in mvc but let it be outside does it make sense so i'm gonna move it outside mvc folder into view models 
yes and then one of the best practices when you do something like this because it's going to cater for both mvc and web api is you also have to temper with namespace so i'm gonna have to remove this guy it's gonna create some errors but it's okay so i want to explain this class because i'm about to create a commit after this i'm not yet done I'm about to create a commit. I won't do it live because some of the things are exposed and then they're sensitive. Those are credentials. As you can see, I have a class called credentials. It's been modified. Um, here it is. It's been modified. So what I did there, I went now. This is the actual key. You will need the key, you know, and then this is how I do it. So it's a static uh, string right so api key for sms api okay so now these are three things that are needed by this project three things so what's needed it's api key what's needed also it's a phone number and what's in it it's a body they are needed the phone number and the body they're needed okay so so we have this guy okay what else did i do okay now now let's resolve this guy let's just remove the mvc part it'll be good to go so this is the interface so you understand and like i said my variable names they take after their object name cool so send sms cool then we have an implementation of this interface called the send sms class so this class was also added based on plus sign now let's fix certain things one of them is to do this guy okay now like i said i'm a clean developer so i might as well remove this because i've been, i've just tested this guy i just developed it now okay so this class it implemented this interface and then i bring in this method called send sms with the entire signature with the written type now what's important about the uh, task is that it's asynchronous it's very, very important. Now, I'll get to this part at, uh, in a second. What's interesting about this video that I'm making right now, that I decided to make, is that, okay, after I create these two, before I bring in the body, I'll talk about the body in a second, I realized that, oh, snap, this is not the .NET Core, so I don't have the Pence injection injection system in place. Actually, there is one. If I go to app underscore start under you see it's for mvc grid it's for mvc grid and we did extensive um video where we are talking about mvc grid please check there's a video called mvc grid project here's a project down here this guy right so now this project it has its own corresponding models you see for mvc grid and then these are the models for mvc for all of the parties but let me just look for the administrator because there's a lot for example if we look at the uploads there is uploads repository uploads there is an interface and then there is an implementation of it so all the classes everything inside the folder called models it's making use of interface and the corresponding classes hence there is a folder called mvc grid where there is a file called ninjet web common so ninjet web common let's do just a google research on what this guy is but i know it's a depends injection something so let's do this so i've already used this guy and then I was hesitant, you know, to make it a global dependency injection. There we go. Ninjet is an open source dependency injector for .NET. There we go. I didn't know because I explained when I was doing a video for MVC Grid how I got to bump into this project. And then it required me to have this class. It's a complicated class. Look at it. It's complicated. You have web activators, we have stuff like this, pre-application stuff method, you know, these are the stuff. I just knew that, you know, this is what I had to do, follow up, you know, dynamic monetary utility. I don't know what they do, to be honest. And it shuts down, there's a bootstrap, there's a kernel, you know, there's all these, yo, heavy stuff, funk, you know, yo, it throws. So it works, it works up until here. 
So after I realized that, it, oh snap, this is not a .NET Core project, I went ahead and risked it. So this is where I registered this guy. And I can show with the changes what I did. So let's go to Ninjet. It will show the changes I made. And this is what we call the version control, you know. So as you can see, I brought in the folder. And then I brought in this guy. So just to prove it. Okay. So I was like, is this going to work? Hmm, let's see. Okay, so that's what I did. So we are done with this guy. Now, let's talk about the implementation. So you saw all those closed links that were open a few minutes ago that they were not making sense. The reason why is because it's not .NET Core, I'm not targeting .NET Core, but I needed something like this, something that can be only used once. So this way the power of injection system comes in, a uh, dependency injection uh, comes in. So what I did then is that I went to my Xamarin uh, uh, project, this guy, as you can see, I was just into services and I went to steal some code for this guy. So if I open upload service, that's how I upload from Xamarin to the web API. So I stole the code, literally. Now let me explain the code. So what I need here, remember like I said, the SMS API project needs what's inside this uh, view model, right? And what I should do, I should do this. Let me show you something. Ah, it's fine. Let me go the right way. I want to show you what this guy spreads, the controller for Web API. So let's go to see. Users. Uh, and then sources. Repos. These are all my projects looking for SMS API and then we want the controller and then let's open this guy with notepad plus plus trust me this is good stuff and then, like I said the content on, on this YouTube channel it's raw that I get to show you everything okay so as you can see we're expecting post one request SMS, this object. That's what we are expecting. We did a video on this. I just want to show you that this is what you expected when we hit this endpoint. Okay, so we need that object. And then we need now to instantiate this guy, you know, HTTP client. And funny enough, I had to use this one of system.net HTTP Usually I use the one of Newton soft. Okay. And then I have a JSON where we serialize what comes in this guy. We serialize it into JSON and then HTTP content. We want to string. We're going to say, okay, we're going to pass this guy, create, create a new instance of a string object based on that JSON. And then we're going to apply the headers to say the content type for that content is going to be application JSON because my web API expects this and then now we're gonna use that HTTP client to post you see there's a post and then you see the class credentials where I have another uh, static field which is now the URL you know and then I pass in the content so the URL is this guy I believe it's like this SMS API something like that and then post one SMS something like this okay it's, it's something like this okay so and then I pass in the content and I'm awaiting the response as you can see it's of type HTTP response message and it's a waitable as you can see it's a waitable yes and then I'm only looking for status code now the reason why, because I'm still deciding that should I expose because remember I'm expecting uh, the status code for better request. I'm expecting 4.1. 1. 
uh, unauthorized. I'm expecting not fun. I'm expecting okay. So I'm, I'm I'm still wondering, but I think it's okay if I ensure that this is um success, which is two hundred. If we hover, um, there we go. Two hundred. Okay, this one is for two hundred. So that's when I return true that yes, it was success. But although I may not do anything about the you know the result, but yeah, so that is that that works. Then where do we apply it? What was the easiest thing to to test on? The easiest thing, because there's a production system, but I'm doing it locally first, you know. So then I went to. Let's close everything. I went to controllers and I went to MVC for clients because we did this previously and then I went to business that's the business controller right now so this is for clients you know so what I did is that this is how we use the patient injection or this how the patient injection uh, it's able to help us I just asked for this guy to say listen give me I send SMS service and then I'm gonna create a corresponding constructor and now this is a perfect timing to put in proper stuff constructor okay good and these are local uh, global variables okay it's got it's private read only it's good to go and we might have some issues okay because we need to do this to ensure that we have a clean using statement okay so I have the constructor where now I injected that uh, service using constructor injection. I believe that's what it's called and then Because of the ad after you add a business This way I say notify that mean we did this uh, there's a video please check. I think uh, Go back. You know there's a video where I did this. Okay, where we notify that mean it's a helper method Is it, is it a wittable? Yes, it is a wittable as you can see and Now speaking of that now, let me leave this so let's go to that helper method. This is the helper method. So we did this, like I said, it's asynchronous task because I sent both email. As you can see, I sent an email and I also sent, because we need this for a waitable. I sent an email, backend of email API, and I just commented this guy out, backend of SMS API. Okay, so this works. Now, however, while I was testing this, I want to make some changes. I want this guy to be one line of code. I don't want this to be this. And this we might not need. Uh, this might not, because I was just trying to see if, can we make use of, you know, the return type. So in this case, I don't need the return type, although it's retaining something, but I don't need it. Let me explain why. The reason being is because when we notify that mean, Firstly, before we notify, we're going to show the success that the business was indeed added and then we're going to notify that mean. So it doesn't matter if that mean gets the email and the SMS. It doesn't matter because then I'm just going to redirect when I'm done. So that's the use case where it doesn't matter anymore. Now, but let's talk about something. Let me show you the changes. For business controller, those are the changes. So firstly, we brought in these two guys, the VModel and the service. And then we have that... Um, uh, global variable we have the constructor and as we scroll down now this is we commented this guy out and we added this I want to remove this guys I want to make it one end of code so let's do that now I want to cut this guy and then I want to change Uh, so we have to change this guy where we're no longer expecting this. We only expect two things. So mean that's going to be string full number and then string body. So we are changing this. We don't need uh, this guy here. Then let's go now and fix the implementation to say what we need is a string number and therefore string body cool so that this guy the interface can be happy then let's go back to the controller where now what we need to pass in here instead of the object 
is the phone number there we go so the phone number is coming from there we go that's a phone number and i'm also passing in the body the sms body we have the email body and i have sms body as you can see they expected the body there we go because i want line one line of code then in here what we need to do is after this guy we needed this guy there we go so so it's not going to be sms board it's just going to be body there we go so what am i trying to do as as, 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 as a developer i'm trying to have this guy only you know um configured once and i just need one line of code in here so let's show the difference you see, it's only one line of code. So if I remove this guy, of which I intend to do that, so we're no longer gonna use the backend of SMS API. So whenever there is a backend of SMS API, I just need the full number and the SMS body. So in here, I just need to await and get this guy. That's it. So if I remove this guy, then I'm done in this controller. And then if you see, if you look at the, the, the dev, you see, I replace this guy. That's how simple it is. That's how simple. I don't. I don't. I don't need this anymore, uh, because we did it, uh, and we did explain why. You know, there is a false flag. There we go. However, another thing I want to do is that this value. It's coming from uh, web config. I can't show that because there's some sensitive credentials. So I want to remove this guy. The phone number, this one. I want to remove it from here. And because it's for the administrator, I'm going to remove this guy because I don't want stuff to be stored on web config anymore. But on a class called credentials, so I moved it already behind the scenes. Credentials. Let's bring in. There we go. Dot. As you can see, there is phone number for SMS. This one there we go i'm also going to remove this one for email because i want i need to make sure that this guy becomes clean there, there are no sensitive stuff there cool so these are the only changes i'm willing to make here um yeah cool that's it we check this guy we check this we are we are we i can't show you this we went through this too we went through this guy i can't show you this now let's run the project control f5 locally i'm so happy because in fact why don't we do that let's open this side my email and let's open my portal for sms uh, so I'm going to authenticate myself with this side yes it did not even finish loading what well, I'm inside and this one let's log in also it's not finished it's not finished it doesn't finish lo loading oh it did not finish load i don't know why let's authenticate okay i'll show the inbox just now in a second i'm waiting for this guy to build So in a nutshell, let me just, while it's building, the project SMS API, because like I said, that's what exactly what I, I said, see, the build succeeded, there we go, it's coming. The issue is that every year I change, if not now and then, whenever I feel like my password is compromised, I change the password for most of my services I use. Uh, all of them, they're on my apple account because um they are syncing between my iphone and my ipad so every year i change them okay 
so I don't want to change where 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 there is the implementation of this service. Like in this case, identical dogs, Spy Eight is using it. Um, I have multiple systems that are using this service, Bulk SMS. So I don't want to change it all over the place. I want to change it only once. So if I change the credentials on this portal, uh, me by going to my account uh, settings, my profile here is, I want to change the same credentials only on this project. And then that's it. And then uh, Identical Docs doesn't know anything about this project having to change the, <clears throat> the credentials or the URL for that matter. So it has loaded locally. We are locally. Now let me log in as the user. It can be any user, doesn't matter. Let's use a test one. Let's use test one. And test one has multiple businesses. And let's first check the the phone number where no 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 this doesn't matter stop let's go back it doesn't matter because i'm not sending to test one i'm sending to myself the administrator so test one now wants to add a business but it's not going to be online it's not going to be listed on the mobile application it's not because any user that adds it's not going to be online by default so they have a seven businesses um let's add another one Add a new business. Okay, let's call it SMS business name SMS business info and then SMS business address this is what i do when i test so the name comes from the business name business info comes from there and then the business address comes from there you know i just want to make sure that i'm testing this thing so like i said please watch previous videos where i do this so let me just hit save so let's see what's going to happen And then I noticed something interesting. There we go. That's my iPhone right there. Okay, before I, I get excited, do you see do you see what it does? It doesn't tell us if the business was added, meaning that there is a bug. If there is a code that's unnecessary, it's a bug. Let's go up. This is not necessary. Me even to show the success is not necessarily because ultimately it's going to redirect and when you hit the redirect, it's going to show a different message. I saw this previously, so this guy is not necessary. But I'll do it on a separate commit because this commit is meant for, you know, configuring this thing. This is how I get to fix my system because we don't need unnecessary code here. Okay, so we, we did notify. Let's look at the actual SMS. If I refresh, the number is going to decrease, the number is going to increase. It increased, it decreased. See my phone? Oh, did you hear my phone that it screamed? There we go. 1910, and now it's 712. So it says, hello, identical dogs crew. That's administrator to my phone. There we go. A new business was added by test one. That's the user we just logged in with. Please check your email. So they say I should check my email. And then if I refresh, they should be 654. There we go, 654. Let's get inside. There we go. And it says was added by this person and needs my immediate attention approval. See, the name of the business is SMS business name. That's why I did it, so I can see. And then, yes, that business was at now, the total of the business, it's eight. And then if you look at it, 
uh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Disappear. It's called SMS business name. It's not online by default because it's not online. It's it needs to wait for me to approve it. So in a nutshell, there we go. It worked. It made use of this guy. It literally worked. And I was happy that the dependency injection, this system works. So that means I can change my entire system to make use of this dependency injection system called Ninject. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm super excited. This is growth. This is amazing. You know, I am excited. The next thing I'm going to do in future, uh, because I'm going to do, I'm going to change all the instances of the uh, backend of uh, SMS API. I'm also going to do a project for the next call for email API. So that's what I'm willing to do so that I only do like the way I just did it. Still using the paste injection system. So I just want to show that how flexible I am with regards to this. So the commit message will go like this. Web. In fact, I should do it now. But I need to make one more change. But I'm not going to do it on, on the video live. Because that's the reason why. So let's go to July. You see, I've been working, fixing some stuff. So the commit message will go like this. That's how I do it. Because this is a game changer. It's going to be zero. No, it's a game changer. Zero. And then one four. Because it's a drastic change. And then on Wednesday, the seventh utilized SMS API project to send an SMS from the business controller. for clients that's it so like I said I have one more change to do um, so that's how it's gonna be and then it's a feature you know I wanna because I also have where I introduce stuff like this to say it's a feature There we go. So I can't push it now because I'm still busy. I need to undo the things I made here and everything. So in a nutshell, that's it. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm ecstatic. So until next time.